Hi, welcome back guys. This is your sensei, back with another fanfiction. This is the movie of, What if Naruto fell in love with Salem? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Immortality, time unending, life eternal, an infinite void devoid of hope. Some might jump at the chance to live forever, to reign forever as a god among men. Salem knew her father would pounce upon such an opportunity. After all, when one is immortal, they cannot be harmed, no. They cannot be injured. They cannot die. To be immortal is to be invincible, far removed from the fear of death and all the terror it entails. You can live life as you please. Do what you want, without fear of consequence. You can do whatever you want. Take whatever they want. Be whomever or whatever they wish. But what if you want to die? Just the thought of it made her grit her teeth as she wandered the wasteland. Salem wanted to die. She wanted to go to the afterlife. She wanted to be with Ozma again. She wanted her torment to end. Instead she was left to languish in a ruined world. Alone, each faltering step carried her across the sundered earth, her destination unknown. No one is meant to live a life alone. Immortality is not the blessing mankind thinks it to be. Tis is a curse. After all, you cannot die. Even after all these years, those words mocked her. And so she walked. All the while, the grim continued to follow her. They were drawn to her now, like a beacon. Throwing herself in that pool of darkness had been a mistake. She'd thought it would end her suffering, but it only made everything worse. So much worse. She knew that were she to look at herself in a mirror, she would see the changes again. Her skin looked like ash, hair gone white as snow. In her eyes, her own reflection horrified her now, just as much as those BLD red orbs. Death eluded her as it always did, but now she was changed for it. Not merely physically, but within as well. Every day she grappled with herself anew, fought against a burning longing to destroy what little remained of this once appealing mind. It spat and seeped in the back of her mind like a wild animal. An endless urge rip and tear, plunge her hands and BLD and bask in the joy of destruction. But there was nothing to destroy. Mankind was gone. This world was but a remnant of its former self, populated by stray wildlife and grim. Those were hers to command, mindless slavering beasts who obeyed her commands without fail. They were incapable of speech and scarcely able to think for themselves. They only destruction. She took no pleasure in her power. Perhaps humanity would one day return, evolve again as they once had. But that day was far in coming. And so she cursed the gods. She cursed the universe. She cursed everyone and everything. Except herself. Was it so wrong to want her beloved back? No. In her mind, she believed she'd done nothing wrong. Perhaps, given time, she might have understood. Instead she wandered aimlessly, uncaring where her feet carried her, so long as she didn't stop moving. She forded dying rivers, climbed crumbling mountains, crossed barren plains. Blisters formed on her bare feet and healed before she could even notice them. She grew weary, yet she kept walking. It was the only thing she could think to do. She searched and searched and searched, hoping to find something. Anything. Anyone. But she never did. There wasn't a single survivor to be found, ever more of the same devastation. What she would not give for the sweet embrace of death. She would have gladly sold her soul for a chance at oblivion. Food gradually lost its appeal for her. Water did little to slake her thirst. Her wounds healed faster than she could hope and flick them. Years passed. Life began to return to the world. And still her torment did not end. Eventually, she tried spelling herself to sleep in the vain hope that she might flee into her dreams. She found only nightmares waiting for her there. Terrible visions, the sight of Ozma turning to dust in her arms, time and again. No, it was too much. It was all too much. Sleep was out of the question, even as her body cried for it. She kept walking, unable to do anything else. Something had to give. And one night, it did. Finally, when she reached the border of some distant forest whose name she couldn't remember, Salem tripped. Unable to see properly in the dark, she stubbed her toe on an upturned root and stumbled. Bereft of balance and lost within her own thoughts, she wasn't able to catch herself in time and so fell forward onto her hands and knees. Pain flared in her palm as she scd it against a particularly sharp stone. She tried to push herself up but her arms buckled and she slapped her head into the dirt. Damn it all. She hissed against the ground. Now my own body betrays me. It just wasn't fair. Bitter tears stung at her eyes and she choked them down in a furious snarl. No, never. She wouldn't give the gods DMN them both. The satisfaction of hearing her cry. She bit her lip until she tasted black BLD on her tongue. A gust of magic burst from her palms and pushed her weary body upright. But her injuries were gone by the time she climbed back to her feet. Not even a hint of BLD remained. It was a sight she'd seen thousands of times. Yet for some reason, this time infuriating her more than any other. Dark fingernails bit into her hands, drawing yet more BLD. She raised her hands to inspect them. As ever the wounds vanished before her very eyes thanks to the curse, pale flesh knitting itself shut as the damage was undone once more. She cursed. Sensing her distress, the grim congregated around her, shuffling and sniffing anxiously. Salem tried to ignore them, but they just kept pushing at her. Fat load of good you are. She snarled. Well, what do you want? Say something. They couldn't speak of course, and so they simply stared at her. Red eyes narrowed to vicious vermilion slits. Enough, 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 enough. Something was screaming. 
It took Salem several seconds to realize it was her. She wasn't crying or weeping. She'd flown well past the breaking point into fiery incandescent rage. She flung out her arms and a mighty explosion burst from her body to incinerate the grim around her. None were spared. Ground and sky alike were scorched for miles in every given direction. Clouds evaporated. Dirt baked into glass beneath her feet. All around her the forest crackled into flames, but Salem cared not. Her bieldy boiled in her veins as her fevered flesh began to burn, but she cared not. She made no attempt to flee, even as this once mighty woodland came down to crush her. She didn't care. Salem kept screaming. She screamed until she lost her voice and her magic finally failed her, until her throat cracked and the fires took her. Until her world turned gray from all the smoke. She let the blaze claim her and toppled back into the black, praying for an end. For a fleeting moment, she thought she saw a light, and within it, Ozma's face. She reached for him. Something dragged her back. Time unwound and Salem felt herself hauled away from the brink yet again. She tried to fight it, tried to resist, but she had no power over her own body. Within moments she stood restored in the ashes of the forest, hale and healthy as she'd always been. Of her temper tantrum, nothing remained. Not a single tree stood. There was only ash. Just as before. He was ash in her arms, she could feel him crumbling away. Here at last, Salem's tears betrayed her and she hunched over with an anguished sob to clutch at her sides. She felt her vocal cords mend almost instantly. Diem and the gods. They wouldn't even grant her this much. And they called themselves merciful. Cease this torment. She shrieked, throwing her head back to howl into the now cleared sky. Have I not suffered enough? Let it end. Please. Her voice broke. I beg of you. The heavens did not answer her. She wasn't sure why she'd expected them to, but her fury mounted all the same, throttling any hope of sanity. Why won't you answer me? Her fury persisted as she snarled at the sundered moon. Give me a sign, damn it. Anything. None came. A peal of bitter laughter escaped her. Even when she begged them for mercy, they still denied her. So be it. She hardened her heart and raised her chin, defiant once more. No one had seen her moment of weakness, and no one ever would. She swore she would never ask anyone for help again. She was strong. She was mighty. She was alone. She would always be alone. What in blazes happened here? Salem's head whipped around with an audible crack. She spied a young man clad in orange and black rags climbing over the next rise, leaning heavily on a gnarled black staff. He balked at her from afar and then quickly bolted in her direction, little more than a brightly colored speck in the distance, one that swiftly grew larger as he descended the hill. She glimpsed wide blue eyes blinking back at her, framed by a whiskered face and tawny blonde hair. As he drew nearer she saw a deer carcass slung over his shoulders, a large buck judging by the antlers. Its neck lolled loosely to one side, clearly broken. Had he done that with his bare hands? That was quite the display just now. He called out to her, drawing her attention away from his prize. Are you all right down there? Salem skittered backwards, calling a pulse of flame leaping to her right palm and a jagged spike of ice into the other. She brandished them half-heartedly. Hope made her weak, however, and she dare not attack. No, the world tumbled from her lips as she shrank back. Impossible. This was a trick. An illusion, some final deceit left to torment her. The gods had scoured all human life from this planet. None had been spared. She knew this to be true. She'd spent decades searching. For someone to simply wander her way like this dot 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 it beggared belief. This had to be a trick. To even consider otherwise threatened to shatter her for good. He was a ghost. Some forgotten spirit wandering the wastes. Surely, he must be. And yet this ghost walked right up to her and shook Salem's hand, leaving her magic to gutter out harmlessly. Finally, another person. He laughed, ignoring her flinch when their palms touched. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. The horse chuckle pushed its way between the two of them as he continued to shake her limp limb with all his might. I've been wandering around for months now, really, I was starting to think this world was filled with nothing but monsters. A pause. Erm, not that you're a monster, of course. He continued to babble happily. Sorry, I'm running my mouth, aren't I? I'm just so happy to see you. With a final sputter, Salem's brain choked and died. Biwa, look again. Her mind instructed her eyes. We are. They cried. He's real. Hope sparked to life and pulling her hand away from the overeager blonde, Salem marshaled her thoughts. Perhaps the god of darkness had missed someone after all, unlikely as it seemed. He wasn't omnipotent. If he was, she'd never have been able to trick him so long ago. But then who was this? Who dot 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 are you? She asked him as much. Him? Me? I'm not quite sure. The stranger scratched the back of his head with that strange self-same smile of his. No, really, I mean it. He was quick to flail his arms when her eyes narrowed anew. I don't know my name or where I am, only that this isn't my home. I'm not from around here. I don't belong here. He see C. C. his head to one side, and the motion made her think of an eager puppy. Weird, isn't it? I can't even remember the world I came from, but I know this ain't it. Everything's kind of fuzzy. Another world. Salem's mind was spinning like a ship in a storm-tossed sea and she struggled to right it. She blinked quickly. You have amnesia. Maybe. Definitely got a headache. All she received was a shrug. Maybe I went and got myself cursed by an angry goddess or something. Maybe I tripped and cracked my head. Who knows? An awkward silence stretched between the two of them and her gaze strayed back to the carcass slung over his shoulders. Oh, this. He jerked a thumb towards his catch. I caught this bugger a few miles back. Whiskered cheeks dimpled in a grin. 
was getting ready to skin him when you started flinging those fireworks around. Pretty fancy jutsu, that. Jutsu. Salem parroted the word back him, baffled. She'd never heard the word before. You mean it wasn't. The young man shrugged anew when she didn't answer. Suppose it doesn't matter. Speaking of which, blue eyes flitted past her, searching for something. When he failed to find it, those keen azure orbs locked on her once more. Is there anyone else with you? Oh, dear. Salem's throat went dry. What was she to tell him? That everyone else was dead. That she was an immortal witch doomed to wander for the rest of her days. He seemed like a such a cheery fellow. It made her want to break him what? No. Bad thoughts. She reeled in her destructive impulses when they reared their ugly head and choked them back down with an effort. She couldn't kill him. She refused. This was her first and last chance to escape from her isolation. She'd not throw it away to satisfy some base need. No. In the end, she settled for a half-truth. I'm alone. That's so. He didn't question her further, that winning smile flashed out at her again. Well in that case, I've got more than enough food to go around. Care to join me? Salem's right arm twitched and nearly reached out for him on the spot. She gripped it by the wrist and wrestled it back down, restraining herself. Eons had passed since she'd seen another human being, much less spoken to one. Did she dare? Did she even remember how to hold a conversation with anyone besides herself? Her stomach growled and Salem glowered bloody red daggers at it incredulously. Traitor. She hadn't felt hunger in ages. Why now? Eh. The young man arched a golden eyebrow as she flushed. That doesn't sound like a no. Still, if you don't want to. No. Stay. A tiny voice cried out in her heart, begging to freed from this lonely exile. Don't leave me alone. Some semblance of that emotion must have shown through her face, because he hesitated, too. An unidentifiable emotion flitted through his bright eyes for a moment. It took her another second to realize that it wasn't just pity but concern. He probably thought she wasn't quite right in the head. And she wasn't. Isolation had left its mark on her body and mind alike. Even now, she still wondered if he was an illusion, some desperate figment of her imagination conjured up by a young woman too weary to go on. Look, my camp's just over that rise. He jerked a thumb over his shoulder, where a faint flow of firelight could be seen. You're more than welcome to join me, miss. He dithered impatiently, waiting for her name, and Salem found herself reminded of Ozma. A bittersweet smile tugged at the corner of her mouth. She'd not spoken to anyone for years now. Grim made for poor conversation. She'd cast her manners aside long ago. She had no need for them and wasn't sure she could even remember what they felt like. But a chance to evade this endless cycle of misery, even for a moment, was too much for her to pass up. He could have been a talking Grim and she still would have eyed him like a juicy cut of meat solely for the chance to converse with someone. Speaking of meat, Red Eyes fell seek head back to him, this time assessing her unexpected guest further. He was certainly handsome enough, in a rough way. His arms had some definition to them, glimpsed through the tattered sleeves he wore, one that suggested a life of constant exercise and movement. Moreover, he was distraction, a face that didn't remind her of misery and pain and lost dreams. She needed that, something to take her mind off her miserable existence, if only for a night. Her mind flashed back to Ozma once more and a fresh pall of melancholy descended on her like a shroud. You may call me Salem, stranger. She tore it off with a snarl and stepped closer to him. Salem, huh. The blonde tilted his head. That's your name, eh? Hey. Certainly suits you. Her brow rose. This from the man who cannot even remember his own. The hunter chuckled ruefully as her brow rose. You've got me there. Was this what banter felt like? Salem found she'd rather missed it. Another point in his favor. She offered him her hand, only to be pleasantly surprised when he snatched it out of the air. His grip was strong, his fingers warm against hers. If he noticed just how cold her hand felt he didn't speak of it and his palm was so very warm, like holding a living sun in her hands. A strange feeling bloomed in her ch scent and her throat went dry yet again for a different reason. Hope you like venison. Slowly, tentatively, Salem gripped his hand and allowed herself to be tugged along. That dot 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 that sounds grand. It was just for a night, she told herself. A moment of weakness as she forgot the curse of her immortality, as she indulged in the unexpected company of another human being. She'd see where things went and come what may, perhaps she might find some small comfort in the arms of a stranger. Perhaps not. Who could say? Was it so wrong to want that? To have a memory to hold on to in this hellish eternity. In a matter of minutes he brought her to his camp. Really, it could be barely be called one. Littlemore saw a small fire pit with a few scattered logs around it to sit upon. A lone tent lay discarded nearby. He'd likely been in the process of irked it when he heard the commotion she'd made. Still, the fire offered some warmth and Salem allowed him to guide her to it as she took a seat. From there, she watched him take the deer from his shoulders and set to work on it with quick, efficient s. You know what you're doing, I trust. She took her chin into her hands and she watched him. Careful you don't lose your fingers. It proved a suitable distraction. Hey, have a little faith. Faith. Just the thought caused her lip to curl. She had no faith, no idea if this was a dream, some figment of her imagination, or something else entirely. This stranger might be real. He might not. She might wake to find him gone come morning. She didn't know which. After the hell she'd been through, she'd take what comfort she could. She mourned Ozma's passing with nearly every fiber of her being, but Ozma was gone. Dead. Deceased. Torn away from her. He'd been gone for decades now. He was never coming back and she was so very tired of being alone. 
even if he were real. She knew this fleeting happiness wouldn't last. Remnant was a harsh place. Even if he survived it, she'd outlive him, surely. He would grow old and wither away. The thought left a sour taste in her mouth as she sat down by the fire. No, she wouldn't think of that. She refused, pushed it from her mind entirely. She wasn't here to think about the future. It had no place here. Tonight she wanted to forget. Just this once. Just dot 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 for a night. She smiled softly to herself. Abruptly her host stilled. Is something the matter? She called over to him. Huh. He muttered. That's funny. I just remembered something. Red eyes narrowed. And what might that be? My dot 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 my name. He croaked, turning to face her with wide eyes. It's not much, but that's good right. Curiosity peaked. The queen of the grim leaned forward. And what is your name? He told her. Naruto. Salem spoke the word slowly, tasting the fullness of it on her tongue. Um, Naruto. She watched him stiffen as she ran a hand over her bosom and felt a tiny shiver of delight at the reaction she provoked in him. Decent enough, I suppose. She granted him what she hoped was a coy smile. She was admittedly a novice in such things and terribly rusty, but she gave it her best try. At least you weren't named Stick or Kettle or some such. This time she couldn't quite hold back a chuckle. It could have been much worse. Hey. He wrinkled his nose at her. What's that supposed to mean? Not a thing, Naruto. A tiny laugh bubbled past her lips as she spoke his name anew. Nothing at all. When was the last time she laughed? Eons ago. Perhaps even longer. Yet in the span of five minutes, she'd laughed twice. There was something strangely disarming about that smile of his. She knew he wouldn't hurt her, that he'd not turn the knife in his hands on her. She wasn't sure what gave her such certainty. Perhaps it was the knowledge that he was incapable of harming her. Even if he somehow managed to kill her, she'd just come back to life. You're mocking me, aren't you? She giggled. Actually giggled. Oh, no, no, no. Wicked little thing. The blonde muttered his turn back to carving up the carcass. Against her better judgment, Salem decided to get one last jab in. Maybe that was petty of her, but she was in too good a mood to care. My dear, she purred, you have no idea. His eyes swung back to her, narrowing now as she shifted her hips upon the log and tilted her head towards him just so. The firelight did interesting things to his face at this angle. Almost made those blue eyes look ruby red, somehow. Salem gazed upon him for a long moment made her decision. She chose to indulge in her curiosity. Why don't you come sit by the fire? She whispered, voice carrying over the crackling flames. The meat will keep for a while yet. It was like FLC King SWCH. She watched Naruto's back stiffen almost imperceptibly, shoulders going tense. She couldn't say when or how her words affected Naruto, only that they did. He didn't sputter or blush or fling up his hands and start a fuss. He laid his knife down, cleaned his hands, and turned to face her. In that moment, she knew her wasn't as foolish as he let on. Thought you were hungry, he said, taking the seat opposite her. Thirsty, really? Salem immediately cursed herself for the slip when his eyes widened. No, why had she said that? It made her want to bury her head in her hands and fly far, far away. Oh gods, she was dot 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 she wasn't simply rusty at this, she was dot 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 well dot 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 bad. Terribly, horribly bad. She wanted to die. She hadn't thought herself capable of blushing after her dip in that pool. She'd been wrong. Her face felt very warm, almost dangerously so, and her resolve wavered. Was it hot out here? Oh, dear. I apologize. She had to choke out the word. I'm not used to this. It's been some time. A pall of silence stretched between the two of them. Salem twitched. Finally, she could bear it no more. Speak. She barked the word, flailing for safety in these suddenly perilous waters. Say something. Anything. What about? Naruto laughed. Tell me about yourself. It was not a question. Don't remember much. He muttered, face flushing. Salem frowned. Tell me what you remember about your world, then. All right. Naruto leaned back a touch, steadied himself, and began talking. Slowly at first, almost haltingly so, but with growing confidence when she didn't interrupt. That seemed to help him remember a bit. In turn, the Queen of the Grim found herself leaning in, soon hanging on every word. He told her a fanciful tale with many gaps between it, due in no small part to the memories he must have lost, but it was a wild story nonetheless. A tale of ninja with incredible abilities, of eccentric characters that boggled the mind, of a world where killing was commonplace and villages sold their services to the highest bidder. He spoke of friends he could barely remember, but something told her he'd cared for them deeply. Whoever he was, wherever he had been, he'd had a life once. Until someone ripped it away from him. Just like her. The thought threatened to burn her anger down to cinders, but... Without even realizing it, Salem found herself holding his hand in her own. She couldn't remember when she'd bridged the gap between the two of them. She blinked down at their interlocked fingers, frowned, then shrugged. Nothing wrong with a little premarital hand holding. Yes, she told herself she wasn't doing anything wrong. That single moment of weakness would change everything. A man and a woman, together at the end of the world. Really, it sounded like the beginning of a lost fable, some silly story told around campfires to delight children or serve as cautionary tale to those who wouldn't listen. Salem had never been much for fairy tales, even as a child. She knew her story was unlikely to have a happy ending. She'd learned to stomach that terrible truth long ago, albeit begrudgingly. The best she could hope for was the occasional pleasant dream amidst the sea of never-ending nightmares that was her life. 
and yet this was real. Salem knew it to be so when she woke from fevered dreams and found Naruto tending the dying embers of last night's fire. Oh, that was a surprise. Bleary red eyes blinked once, then widened as sudden realization broke with the dawn. He was still here. If he'd heard her scream in her sleep, he made no mention of it. He didn't even seem to be aware that she'd stirred at all. Never mind that. He was still here, which meant he existed, not as a figment of her imagination, but as a person. Instead of speaking, Salem contented herself to watch the blonde work for a few moments more before she made her wakefulness known to him. He hadn't laid with her last night, she knew that much, because she found herself fully clothed, if a bit dirty from sleeping on the grass. She wasn't sure what to make of that. On one hand, the prospect of the chase of courtship actually excited the silly maiden that lingered in her heart. On the other dot 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 well, she had an itch she needed to scratch damn it, and she was beginning to wonder if this boy wasn't dense as a brick. No, thicker. Well, she'd just have to be blunt enough to break through to him now, wouldn't she? As she looked on, what remained of last night's dinner was carefully sealed in a strange scroll of some sort. He just sort of pushed the meat into his scroll and it vanished in a plume of smoke. Salem regarded the object with thinly veiled interest in the early morning sunlight. Mayhap it was magic of some sort. No, that was unlikely. The god of darkness deamen him to the void had stolen that gift from Remnant, ripping it away from mankind before he destroyed them. She was the only one who still held it due to her immortality. In all likelihood, this likely a relic from Naruto's world. And what a fascinating one it was. She would have to ask him how it worked late. Or have. At length Naruto stood, cleaned his hands one final time, and tilted his head. You've been staring for the better part of five minutes now. He spoke the words to empty air, back to her. Something on your mind. Salem flushed at having been caught out. When did you notice? That you were staring holes into my back. A cheeky grin peeked over his shoulder before he turned to face her. Ages ago. You're really not subtle. Wrinkling her nose in mild displeasure, the Queen of the Grim shook her head and sat up. She really wasn't, was she? Ozma was ever the crafty one, always the schemer, ever the planner. The one and only time she had tried such, her glorious crusade ended with the theft of magic and the destruction of the human race. Yeah, she wasn't good with plans. There it is again. A finger poked her cheek. You've got that look about you. I have no idea what you mean. She sulked. Fair enough. What should we do now? A small smile plucked at Salem's lips as she considered his inquiry. Once upon a time, she was the one to ask Ozma such a question. Back then, she had been a prisoner. No longer. Now it was her turn to answer and for the first time in eons, her mind balked at the answers. Ideas. Activities. Countless notions of new things you couldn't do with one person, but two. Two was another matter. In the end, she settled on a familiar answer, a comfortable response hummed between the two of them. Whatever we want. Hmm. He granted her a grin. Well, there's a river near here. Salem arched an eyebrow. Good sir, surely you're not implying that I smell. Nope. He laughed, a ray of sunshine once more. I'm implying that I need a bath. Haven't had one in weeks. Pale cheeks burned bright as she traipsed after him. Truly, it was a strange thing indeed to be courted again. It left her feeling anxious and excited in equal measure. This young man wasn't some mere morsel to be hastily devoured and forgotten. No, he was a full course meal. A succulent feast, the kind that came around once in a lifetime. This dot 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 this was something to savor. They found that river in relatively short order. Not a raging white ford as Salem suspected, but a babbling brook fed by a waterfall. One nestled beneath a rocky outcropping framed by a copse of healthy trees, their green leaves only just beginning to redden with the coming of autumn. It was appealing to behold, nature in its element, untouched by man or civilization alike. The water looked deep enough to bathe and certainly, if not swim. There was no danger to be at here, and even if there were, she knew no wild animal could possibly fell her, much less her companion. Salem still regarded the running water with thinly veiled concern. It's nice, isn't it? Her companion hummed, sauntering past her. I found it a few days ago. Leads all the way down to the ocean. By contrast, Naruto felt no such fear. He stooped by the bank and dipped his hands into the crystal clear liquid with ease, cupping a handful of water within his fingers. From there he moved his face into the small puddle he created and shook his head vigorously to scrub the dirt from his whiskered visage. He didn't even notice her concern until he stood up again. Ah, that's the stuff. Blue eyes caught her fear and narrowed moment later. What's wrong? She looked away, poking her fingers together. I cannot swim. A bead of sweat ran down his brow. Excuse me. I said I can't swim, blast you. Salem seat silently and stamped her right foot in a rare lapse of control. Well, why shouldn't she? It wasn't as if her adventures with Ozma had ever led her near the water. She didn't even know what an ocean looked like. No wonder she'd never felt the need to cultivate the skill. She'd never known what drowning felt like, but she certainly had no longing to experience it. She braced herself for the laughter, for a derisive jeer at the very least. It never came. Naruto's hand came down on her shoulder and gave it a little pat. Don't wait in too deep. Salem grabbed at his wrist but found his fingers instead. Where are you going? Downstream. He made no effort to tear his arm free. On the contrary, he welcomed the unnatural chill brought on by her hand. You want to wash in private? Right. Can't do that while I'm here now, can you? The tips of her ears burned a bright pink and his grin proved telling. Yup, his smile gleamed at her again. I thought so. 
Don't worry, I won't go too far. Salem didn't much like the idea of him leaving her line of sight, but for decency's sake, she capitulated. Be safe. She squeezed his hand. Naruto's smile faltered for a moment. Holler if you need me? Yeah. He tugged his fingers from hers and sauntered away, leaving the exile with her thoughts. There was no point trying to control him. Something told her that any attempt to reign Naruto in would only lead to chaos and disaster. Salem didn't much mind the former, but she'd endured her fair share of the latter in Eon's past. Never again. Moreover, she'd been a prisoner herself. She would never force her will on someone she cared for. Ho oh ho, a nasty little voice whispered in the back of her head. It was herself. We care for him now, do we? That's just adorable. No, Salem hissed the word, fisting at her sides. No, no, no. We are not going through this again. She'd endured the whole talking to yourself phase long ago. That had been a particularly bleak moment in her life. When one lived in isolate for hundreds of years one inevitably became a little mad. The doubt, the fear, the insecurity dot 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 it had driven her to a dark place. But she'd emerged from that pit. She wasn't about to slide down that slope go back if she could help it. And all this for a boy who cooked you dinner and held your hand. We've done. Other things. She grit her teeth as laughter answered her. Yes, yes, premarital hand-holding and hugging. How crude. How shameless. Such a dirty girl. Silence. Red eyes strayed back to the waterfall. She'd not had a proper wash in at least a century. She'd never felt the need. She had not cared to. Still, perhaps a distraction was for the best after all. Dark robes fell in a puddle at her bare feet and she stepped over them. Salem pulled the pins from her hair then laid those near her slippers as well, thereby freeing her pale tresses to glimmer in the morning light. Loose waves of ashen hair tumbled down her shoulders as she straightened, concealing her shapely rear while she walked to the water's edge. Hmm, it might be best to consider cutting it. Any longer and she might trip. Or you could keep it. The voice chimed unhelpfully. Perhaps he likes girls with long hair. Who can say? Ozma certainly did. Salem flinched, but dipped a toe into the water and found it warm, almost pleasantly so. Still, she dithered. She wasn't about to jump in like some uncouth. Banzai. A might shout and a splash downriver told Salem that Naruto held no such reservations. Such a boy. Still, his lack of restraint emboldened her. With one arm folded before her bare breasts for the sake of modesty, the Queen of the Grim waded into the shallows. It felt, rather nice, all things considered. She couldn't remember the last time she'd let her hair down fully and allowed herself to bask in a simple pleasure such as this. With a final tentative look back to where Naruto had gone, she began to scrub her arms. Don't you want to remember? There it was. That voice again. So familiar. Like a long-lost friend he hadn't seen in ages. So nostalgic. So known. So unknown. Naruto frowned as he dunked his head underwater. There was a pleasing moment of sweet, blissful nothingness before he came up for air again. That brief second of silence allowed him to better center himself, MSDR his thoughts and shove down the brief moment of panic he always felt when he spoke to him. Kurama, right. He called out into the silence as he shook himself like a wet dog. Is that you? No, I'm freaking Mary Poppins. Of course it's me. An awkward pause followed as his words rang loudly in his head. Hey, no need to be rude. The blonde pursed his lips. Was there something you needed? I, no, I'm sorry. He felt the fox sigh within his psyche. It's not your fault. None of this is your fault. I'm just irritated. You should have remembered everything by now. Naruto wrinkled his nose and gazed back at his reflection in the water's surface. It felt like him. It looked like him. But it wasn't him. Or was it? His head and heart felt disconnected. He felt like a stranger wearing another man's skin. This young man moved as he moved and copied his every gesture, but he couldn't quite equate it with himself. No, not yet. The thought galled him more. I want to recall what happened to me, he admitted after a moment's pause. I just can't. It's like there's a block there. One hand lashed out, splashing against the water to shatter the face staring back at him. Droplets sprayed everywhere. Things trickle through every now again, but I can't make myself remember. It didn't last. Never did. Soon enough the image reformed, and he was left starting at himself once more. I've already told you all I know. The fox soaked. That was the crux of the matter, wasn't it? When he'd first landed here, he'd been terrified by the concept of a voice in his head. Hirama had proven himself real time and again since then. Moreover, the words he spoke felt true, not like some distant story he couldn't remember. As if he'd been there. Lived it. If there wasn't reason enough to trust him, he didn't know what was. If nothing else, Kurama certainly wasn't an enemy. And I appreciate it. He soothed. Thanks to you, I remember my name and how to fight. You're welcome. Dot 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 but it still doesn't feel like me. The blonde barreled on. Frankly, it's a lot to take in. You said I ate a god. How does someone devour a deity? With a lot of anger and great determination. Kurama chuffed, but it sounded false even to his ears. There wasn't any choice at the time, remember. He must have sensed his confusion or recalled his amnesia, because once again, he retold the tale. Sasuke lost his arm. Kakashi and Sakura were down for the count, and you. You were badly wounded. You latched onto Kaguya when she stabbed you, yet instead of dying, you ripped her chakra away from her. A shudder passed through their mental link. I've never seen you that angry before. Hirama, you just drained her dry body and soul. The old fox continued to mumble to himself, like drinking a person through a straw. There wasn't anything left of her afterward. I don't know how you did it. Not even sure I want to know. 
The strange sensation plucked at Naruto's heart as he splashed water onto his face. It might have been concern. You all right? Not really, but thanks for asking. I'm here. You're here. That's what matters. But you don't know how we got here. It wasn't a question. I do not. His partner ally, friend, sounded almost sheepish to admit the truth there. Everything went black after that. And no, because I know you're about to ask, I don't know what all that power could do to you. I only remember as much as you do on that front. We woke up in this wasteland together, spent weeks wandering. Until we met Salem. Naruto concluded with a roll of the eyes. I know, my memory isn't that bad. Everything should come back eventually. It has to. What if it doesn't? He whispered. It will. A snarl greeted him. Speaking of right and wrong, that Salem woman you've befriended. She isn't normal. She's broken. You'd do well to be wary of her. And there went all the concern, every drop of empathy froze into stubborn defiance. Oh, he knew Salem was hiding something, but he also knew better than to pry where he wasn't wanted. He'd seen her step out of that fire unharmed. Whatever secrets she held were her own, she could reveal them at her own leisure or keep them locked away forever. He didn't much mind. He had a secret of his own, after all. Calling her out while concealing Kurama from her. That would make him even more of a hypocrite. Then she's like me. Naruto set his jaw in a mulish line. If she's as broken as you claim, then I'll just have to build her back up again, won't I? Do you care for her? His face turned red as he recalled the events of last night. They hadn't done anything untoward. They'd sat, held hands and talked about their lives until they fell asleep. Well, he'd done most of the talking. Salem had just listened until the end. The little that she'd told him though dot 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 well, if someone were to tell him she was evil at this very moment, he'd stand up and punch him in the mouth. Yeah, the admission surprised him when it came. I do care about her. A man with hardly any memories to his name and a woman left alone to die. They really did make an odd pair. Hirama agreed with that assessment. Yeah, what? The blonde scowled. Why are you laughing at me? A fresh peal of laughter greeted him. Even with your memories gone, you're still you for the most part. That's a relief. Of course I'm me. He sulked, spinning in the water to face the shore once more. Sometimes you get kicked when you're down. Sometimes you gotta kick back even if the... That is a big wolf. He trailed off numbly as he came face to face with a massive grim. It was an absolute monster even for one of its kind, standing well over ten feet tall on all fours. He imagined it would be yet taller still if it stood on its hind legs. Ghastly red eyes regarded him behind a mask of polished white bone as it lurked at the water's edge, mighty claws digging into the loamy soil while it tried to make sense of him. Naruto couldn't bring himself to move and so the beast moved for him, no snuffling as it leaned across the shallows to inspect him. But no slavering wolf was this. It didn't attack. Something held it back. Whoa there, girl. Naruto stood slowly and raised his hands, water dripping from his shoulders. Let's not do anything rash, eh? I'm not in the mood for a fight. Scarlet Orb stared back at him intently. I'm dot 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 just gonna get dressed now, all right. He kept one hand up as he reached for his breeches. Sit, stay. The beast made no move attack him as he donned them. He wasn't sure if that was a good thing. This thing almost seemed intelligent. He'd seen Grimm before, even fought a few of the mindless beasts a time or two when he had no other choice. Some he'd slain. Others he drove away. Some returned. Others did not. From what he'd seen thus far, you had to be wary of the clever Grimm. The longer these creatures lived, the wiser and larger they became. This one looked like it could snap a grown man in half with a single bite. Not a threat to him by any means, but he'd rather not fight unless he had to. So dot 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 we good. He hazarded a guess, stepping to the right. The beast turned its head to follow him and he beheld the cracks in its mask, rather, a series of spiderweb fractures etched around what passed for its right eye. That looked familiar. He'd seen those somewhere before, hadn't he? In the back of his shattered mind, a recent memory stirred. Clenched knuckles barreled into the beast's face, snapping its gaping maw to a side before those fangs could find him. Its body crashed to the floor with a startled yelp. Lacking the strength to rise, it snarled weakly. Stay. He stabbed a finger at it. You're not strong enough to beat me. Blazing red eyes glowered balefully at him as he walked away. Naruto blinked and reality snapped back. Wait a minute. His fist smacked into an open palm. I know you. You're that DMN dog from before. His voice seemed to reactivate the grim, for no sooner did he shout than it bowled forward. Naruto tensed, but no attack came. Instead it rammed its snout into his CH scent. He felt its entire body inhale deeply, seeking his scent like some giant dog. When it began to LCK him, he laughed and tried to ward it off with his hands. Whoa, hey, Black. He sputtered as that rough tongue dragged across the length of his face. Down, girl. Down. Much to his dismay, the wolf only made a chuffing sound and redoubled its efforts. Large paws pushed him down and knocked him back into the water again. He thrashed upright, coughing and hacking. Stay. He stabbed a finger at it. Incredibly, the beast obeyed. It probably smells Salem on you. Huh. Naruto blinked. What does she have to do with this? You really have no idea, do you? Well, I'm not opening the can of worms. As if summoned by that very thought, they heard her shriek somewhere a ways ahead of them. Naruto blew out a long-suffering sigh and loped in that direction. Much to his chagrin, the wolf followed him. No, no, no. Salem wailed. Get away. What was this thing? The queen of the grim flailed backward, sparks skittering from her fingertips as she fought off her attacker. Hmm. In hindsight, perhaps fought was too strong of a word. 
Regardless, her power availed her not. For all her might and magic, the demon thing refused to let go of her. Worse, she couldn't shock the blasted creature, because that would mean electrocuting herself. She had no longing to maim her body just to pry it loose either. Not that she could. Cease at once. She glared bloody red daggers at it. Ah, you don't? I swear I will make sushi out of you and your descendants. If it was at all phased by her threats, the octopus didn't care. The ghastly red thing only clung on tighter to her limb. Really, what was it even doing here? This wasn't the ocean. Had it crawled upstream or something? Even as she debated that, a lone eye rolled up to regard her curiously, and Salem felt something gibber helplessly deep inside her. Squishy. Slimy. Nope. All the nope. Definitely nope. All her fire and fury quivered in the face of an unsightly horror such as this. She couldn't even bring herself to touch it. So she flailed her arm again, to no avail. The creature inched upward toward her shoulder. Salem absolutely hissed. Let. Go. Now. Don't worry. I've got you. Strong hands reached over her shoulders, grasped the ghastly creature by the head, and pried the grasping suckers off her arm. A familiar scent flooded her nose as she stepped back into a broad CH scent. Her hands flailed again, but this time for a different reason altogether. She knew who was standing behind her. She didn't even have to look. The hell's this guy doing here, anyway? Naruto regarded the cephalopod in his grasp with narrowed eyes. This ain't salt water. That said, the tentacled creature quailed in his grasp. Weren't you being a little grabby? Why, I think he was. Salem's smile was just a touch saccharine. Be a deer and hold him still, would you? Sure thing. Naruto held his arm out. Salem snapped his fingers, conjuring a sphere of fire to her right hand. Beneath her smoldering gaze and faced with such a flame, the octopus all but wilted. In all fairness, it lacked the means to communicate and thus couldn't shout to convey the terror it was feeling in that moment. Salem suspected she knew what it was thinking. Had it the strength to do so, she believed it would be raising as many arms in surrender. She could just imagine its voice now. Mercy, M. Lady. Her lips twitched. No. Her hand scythed down and it was gone. Well, that's done. Naruto sighed, considering the charred remnants of the poor creature. Glad I could help. My hero. Salem snarked. Hey, it worked, didn't it? He smirked back. She turned to face him with a smile and accidentally bumped up against, bare hip brushing his. Naruto's smile vanished as he was viciously reminded of her lack of clothing. With a fresh flush of heat, Salem remembered as well. For a moment she experienced a strange girlish longing to slap him for seeing her naked. She suppressed it ruthlessly, choking it down before it could manifest further. Why do such a thing? They were both adults here. Besides, he'd come to her rescue in her moment of weakness she knew he had no ill intentions. If anything, the ill intentions were hers. Red orbs blinked up at him through damp lashes. Blue eyes flitted down to her full lips. Something stirred in the air and Salem's heart began to pee and dee wildly in her ears, drowning everything else out. She could hear nothing more, not the birds in the sky above, not the gentle rush of the water, not even her own shallow breathing. Thoughts of dark pleasure burned in her veins, wild and intent. She could do nothing to calm them, her BLD was well and truly up. Her tongue flitted out, LC King her lips. Naruto saw it and stiffened. On a certain level Salem was aware how she must look in this moment. Just as she knew the effect she must have on him. Pale strands of damp hair concealing her breasts, one hand held between her legs to preserve her modesty. She was equally aware of him too, all lean corded muscle, body still damp from his dip in the river. Her eyes drifted lower dot 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 oh. Oh my. Good gods, you could grind meat on those gah. Bad girl. Control yourself. Her instincts were not so easily quelled. Now, a voice hissed in the back of her mind. Take him. This is your moment. Do it. Do it now. He won't be here forever. And there it was. The ugly truth. Salem didn't want to admit it, but she didn't long for a simple lay anymore. Rather, she did, but she didn't want things to end there. She wanted something that would last. But she couldn't have that now, could she? The gods had seen to such matters. DMN them. She could either have a pleasant memory, or none at all. Something snapped. Belatedly, she realized it wasn't her mind, but the very last thread of self-control she'd been clinging onto all these years. He could die tomorrow for all she knew. Perish, the same way Ozma had. I'm sick of this. Too late, she realized she'd spoken the words aloud, because his eyes widened. Sick of what? Naruto asked. Everything. Despair burst out of her in a snarl as she glared up at him. Of this curse. Of being the lonely girl in the lonely tower. Of living a lonely life. Here at last her arms moved, as she hung her head, handsing into pale fists at her sides. I'm tired of being being alone. She stepped into him. Of so very many things. Her eyes snapped back to him again, burning with flames. I almost wish I'd never met you. I... They got a startled blink from him. Wait, you're cursed. No, no, no. No interruptions. She was ranting. Hush. I was miserable before I met you. Salem's finger pressed against his lips, muffling his words. I had all but given up hope. You gave it back to me. You. That same digit stabbed against his skull now, seeking the brain matter behind it. You made me feel this way. This is all your fault. He could have challenged her, could have shouted her down in any number of ways. She saw it in his eyes. He chose not to. She adored him for that. Oh gods. She wanted him. Was she truly that desperate? It hadn't even been 24 hours. What the devil was wrong with her? She knew the answer, of course. She simply didn't want to admit it. He was like her. The outcast. The forgotten. The exile. 
If that didn't make him a kindred spirit, she didn't what could. He was literally the last man on earth, even if he weren't. He'd stretched out his hand to her in her darkest hour and pulled her into the light. That meant something, damn it. Pale hands grabbed Naruto by the shoulders, pulling him close. I'll be frank. Her words were the fiercest whisper now, heard by him alone. I'm sick of dancing around this. I want to embrace you, no? I'm going to knock you down and make sweet, sweet love to you if you don't speak up in the next. Three seconds. She gave him a shove before folding both arms before her bare bosom. This is your one and only chance to walk away. With that said, Salem forced herself to step back and give him a chance to retreat. Please don't take it. The voice came back with a vengeance, crying the tears she refused to shed. I don't want to be alone anymore. It hurts. Make it stop. Please, don't push me away. Well, she awaited his judgment fretfully. Make your choice. Naruto hung his head. Well, when you put it like that. Still the silence stretched on, seconds spiraling endlessly into oblivion. Salem tapped her fingers against her crossed arms, trying to still the frantic beating of her heart. She'd thrown the impetus of change into his hands now. Whatever decision the wayward warrior made would be his own. Without warning he scratched the back of his head and raised his gaze to show her a rueful smile. For all her sorcery, she couldn't tell what it meant. That terrified her. Not for the first time, she wondered when how. She'd allowed herself to come undone. I think I already have. Her smile cracked. You have. To be fair, his smile turned a touch sheepish, I know next to nothing about romance. Oh. Her heart turned to stone and fractured all at once, dozens of tiny cracks etched itself into his hardened surface. If it's a partner you're looking for, I'm not sure I'd be a very good one. Fine. This was fine. She could be an adult about this. She wouldn't fall to pieces because the only person to understand her had forsaken her. However, all those tiny cracks mended themselves in an instant. Salem's head whipped around and she tried in vain to hide the brief ember of hope that sprang to life in her eyes. If you're happy with a broken someone like me, Naruto coughed into a fist, I'm willing to try. Salem needed no further provocation than that. Those words sealed her fate. Broken. What was wrong with being broken? She was broken too. She stepped in and pressed her mouth to his. Naruto's world went white. There could be no other word for it. One moment he was gazing and nearly crying Salem, in the next, her face lit up and she stepped into his arms. With a single vicious whisper, she stepped in and molded her mouth against his. In that moment, a single word passed between the two of them. He wasn't the one to speak it. Mind, her lips were soft against his, tasting faintly of berries and hidden secrets. Infinitely yielding, yet firm all the same. Salem was an appealing woman. And at the end of the day, he was but a man. She was attractive to be sure, there could be no denying that, but it wasn't her beauty that drew him in. Not even her tears. Her words did all that and more. Perhaps had he possessed the full breadth of his memories, he might have reacted differently. Might have panicked like a boy. Now, he was almost grateful he still had a few screws loose. He couldn't fight off the urge to keep her close. Tan arms wrapped around her pale waist and drew her close. Not enough to hurt or otherwise crush, just to hold her. His gesture emboldened the Queen of the Grim more than he expected. She made a noise of delight, flung her arms around his neck and leaned in fully, angling her head to deepen the chaste embrace. When she pulled away to breathe he chased her, mouth crashing against hers. Red eyes flew wide open. This time the sound she offered reminded him of some dark beast, ancient and hungry. Somewhere in the back of his mind, Kurama scoffed, rolling his eyes. Nope. Not dealing with this. Wake me with it's over. A familiar wolf howled in the distance and Salem pulled away with a long-suffering sigh. Made a friend have you. Her lips glistened wetly, eyes burning dark with. Should I be jealous? Eh? Of a giant beowulf following me around like a lost puppy. He chuckled. Nah, you really shouldn't. Um, she pressed her head against his ch scent. There are things I should tell you dot 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 but not now. How was that embrace? Wonderful. Heart stopping. Amazing. Incredible. Naruto didn't have enough words to describe it. He'd never been embraced before and no, he couldn't recall that incident. Anyone who said otherwise was spreading vicious lies and propaganda. She'd ignited emotions in him he didn't even know he had. He wasn't sure if this was love or just. Regardless, he wanted to explore more of it with her. I'm not sure. He lied horribly. Can I have another? Salem hummed and leaned in again. As many as you want. For all the gaps in his memory, Naruto did his best to keep Salem entertained. He didn't leave her side. Not once. If anything he proved himself good company, quick to fill awkward silence with conversation, always ready. With an easy laugh and a quick smile. Their courtship was a slow thing, almost tentative really. But as one year bled into two, followed by three, then four, and finally five, Salem began to notice things. She could see him aging. Soon, he wasn't a boy anymore but a young man in his early twenties. And he aged well. Really, he did. But he still aged. Fear began to creep over her. How much longer would he last? Fifty more years. Sixty. Seventy, if she was lucky. Naruto swore up and down that he would last far longer than that thanks to his genes, but still the fear persisted. It bedeviled her to no end. It ate away at her from the inside, plaguing her every thought. She knew his time was limited. And this dot 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 what they had was wonderful. She couldn't bear to give it up. She'd almost forgotten what it was like to be alone. He found a dozen different ways to entertain her every day, and she learned something new at least once a week. It was a good life. Simple. Pure. When he looked at her he saw not a monster, but a woman. She loved him for that. 
Oh, gods, she loved him. Her feelings for Ozma what they'd had together would always be a part of her, but she didn't want to go back to her lonely vigil. Not now, perhaps not ever, but time was a cruel foe. What fate could not take from her, it sought to undo through more insidious means. There was nothing she could do to stop it. Immortal she may well be, and immune to the ravages of time, but Naruto was not. One day he would die. One day, he would leave her alone. And when that day came, she knew she would shatter. Sure enough, it came to a head. It took years, but Salem's emotions reached a boiling point all the same through no fault of her own. In hindsight, she wasn't sure what compelled her to bring him to the Gremlins. Was it a whim on her part? An accident? Perhaps. Salem did not believe in fate, and she loathed the idea of destiny. She'd meant to show him where she had been changed. And she had. She did. She told him the truth. She told him everything, laid, or every sin bare to him, of her loss, of her curse. She held nothing back. All this she did, expecting anger and fear, derision and scorn. When he accepted her wholeheartedly, she broke. You can't be real. Naruto looked away from the pool of darkness with a frown as she backed away from him. How so? I wiped out the human race. She flung up her arms. Yet you'd forgive me for that. How? Why? I'm irredeemable. His blonde brow rose. Did you intend to get those people killed? She faltered. No dot 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 but still. Do you regret it? A wince? Yes. You made a mistake. Naruto stepped forward and took her hands in his. Yes, it was a very big mistake, and it changed a lot of things, but that's life. His fingers squeezed hers, tan threading between pale. Nobody's perfect. We all fall down. We all screw up. She whimpered and he pressed his forehead to hers. It's in the getting back up again, what we do afterwards, that defines who we are. Blue eyes bored into hers. You want to be a good person, Salem. You just never had the chance. And what do you want from me? The words burst from her in a shout. I already told you. Nothing. The question you need to ask yourself is this. EFLC kept her forehead. What do you want? Are you happy? No. Harsh, bitter tears stung her eyes. You won't live forever. You're only human. You'll die, sooner or later. Salem, I don't even have any gray hairs yet. He tugged a stray strand of blonde loose from his scalp. See, not a single one. When her expression didn't waver, he blew out a sigh. I don't know what you want me to say here. I'm probably gonna live to be a hundred at least. Maybe even longer. Any other day, she would have believed him. No, but you won't live forever. She laughed hysterically. Her fears had her now, throttling all logic, all reason, every semblance of sense. You'll leave or you'll die and I'll be alone. Say you won't. He looked away and it was good as Diamenim. You may be strong, but you're not immortal. Pale hands rose to cup her head as her eyes watered. You'll pass on and then I can't. Here at last her voice broke and she doubled over, clutching at herself. No dot 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 it's too much. I can't. I can't be alone again. You know what? Naruto considered her words. His nose wrinkled. Then he stood. You're right. I will die. Salem frowned when he pulled his fingers from hers. It hurt her more than words. Blue eyes strayed to the pool of darkness only yards away. Funny thing, though. I think I see a way to fix that. Salem grabbed at him. Don't you dare. Naruto did dare. He dove forward. Splash. It didn't hurt. Naruto blinked, squinting against the murky waters, to no avail. He saw only shadows. From what Salem had told him, there should be terrible, terrible pain. Yet he felt none of that. Not a thing. Oh, wait. There it was. There. Salem jolted back with a yelp as a clenched fist burst through the surface of the pool mere inches from her face. Her heart skipped a beat before she realized who it belonged to. Naruto's arm flailed blindly for a moment before latching onto the lip of the crater. Another hand emerged from the muck, grasping for purchase. She balked at it for a brief moment, not quite comprehending what was happening. Then her arms moved of their own accord and she reached out to grasp his hand. Firm fingers found hers and with a mighty heave, pulled him free. Oomph. Naruto didn't simply climb out of the pool. He crashed headlong into Salem, sending them both sprawling. Red met red and she knew he was changed. Blue eyes had bled scarlet and black, his once healthy skin now reduced to a sickly gray shade. Veins of crimson crept through his whiskered cheeks, lending them those marks an almost eerie hue. As if the corruption had. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? He grinned. Now we match. It took everything she had not to burst into tears. He'd corrupted himself for her, thrown himself into a literal pool of evil just to lengthen his life. It looked to have worked, too. The grim were eternal, after all. It wasn't a curse by any means, but his triumphant smile said he'd at least managed to achieve his goal. Still she had to know. She must know. How do you feel? Energetic. He tilted his head and bounced once on his feet. Feel like I could run a marathon. That's all. She blinked, a worm of confusion burrowing into her breast. No violent impulses. None whatsoever. Well, his eyes flashed and she shivered as a spark of longing shot through them. I want to violently embrace you. Does that count? He delivered a bruising embrace to her lips before she could protest. Salem yielded to him with a mon, realized what he was doing, and rested herself back. He reeled her back in like a fish, hands coiling loosely around her waist. Sharp teeth nibbled the nape of her neck, planting delicate embrace against her pale flesh. Her eyes burned scarlet all over again, threatening to shatter her control dot 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 and the BSD already pulled away. How's that for an answer? Her face turned crimson. Naruto. What? He sulked, but there was an impish smile tugging at his pale cheeks. Just being honest. 
Hmm. He squinted, eyes narrowing to think slits. Wait a second. I think I can dot 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 off. There we go. As she looked on, tan skin replaced the ghastly pallor of his flesh. Color came flooding back into his cheeks. Silver hair burned a bright blonde once more. Literally. But that shouldn't be possible. If he could revert to how he'd been before, did that not mean the same was possible for her? She asked as much. How did you? Dunno. He shrugged again. Just felt natural. Like flipping a SWCH, you know. Naruto. Salem swallowed. You're on fire. Aw, thanks. Love you too. No, really. She pointed a pale finger at his still smoldering hair. Fire. Your hair is burning. Eh? Blue eyes swung upward. His eyebrows shot into his hairline, even now shimmering with faint golden flames. Huh. A hand pushed through them and came away unburnt. Neat. Well, that's a side effect. Not a bad one, though. Just like that, he banished the last of her fears into the abyss. To think, she'd actually doubted him. She should have known better. What had he said to her, once? FCK fate and DMN destiny. Yes, that sounded rather apt right about now. Laughter tumbled from her lips, long and loud. She couldn't hold it back. She didn't even want to try. So she settled for the next best thing. She burst into tears and tackled Naruto. Hey. He laughed. Was it something I said? Salem silenced him with her lips and her hips alike. Ah, and that's the final plank. Naruto leaned back, tucked the hammer into his belt, and surveyed his work. It was crude, shoddy at best, but he didn't mind. Even in his first life he'd never been the best craftsman. The patch job would hold until the roof started to leak again. He was sure it would, a few years down the line. Also fine. He'd patch that too. A carpenter he would never be, but he knew how to use a hammer. There we go. He grunted, pushing himself to his feet. That should fix the leak. Wiping a bead of sweat from his brow, he leaped off the roof in a graceful arc. From there he landed nimbly in the grass on bent knee and shoved himself upright once more. His joints protested the sudden movement with a jolt of pain. He ignored them as he always did. Show off. Tirama uttered a jaw-popping yawn. Was there really a need for that many backflips? Maybe he was. Then again, he had good reason to be. After decades of wandering, he'd finally convinced Salem to settle down. Well, inasmuch as someone like her could settle down. Theirs was a homely little cottage in the woods, nothing more. Simple, even. Simple was good. Naruto liked simple. Even if humanity returned one day, they'd think twice before hunting in grim infested woods. And if they didn't dot 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 well, he still had the staff for good reason. Sauntering up the steps, he spied a hulking dark shape lurking near the porch. Not on it, not anymore. She'd grown far too big for that. A massive head rose from giant paws to regard him with baleful red eyes. Don't worry, Luna. He cooed at the Beowulf. It's only me. The dread wolf huffed once and laid her muzzle down, content to return to her slumber. Naruto took a moment to marvel at her. Really, she just kept growing. She was almost double the size she'd been when they'd first met, with no signs of slowing down. Just how big was she going to get? Hey, not his concern. Shrugging, he swung the door open and strode inside, grinning from ear to ear. Hey, Salem. He called. I fixed the dot 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 roof. His words trailed off as he saw the love of his life. She wasn't in any shape to answer, though he supposed that one was her fault, not his. He found her sprawled gracelessly on the couch near the hearth, fast asleep. She did not toss. She did not turn, didn't make a sound save for her own even breathing. She was still in at peace with the world. He couldn't remember ever seeing her like this. She'd woken up screaming more than once before, and he'd always had to rock her back to sleep. Yet now, Naruto's jaw CLC kept open. Well, I'll be DMN. He whispered, no nightmares. Tiptoeing forward, careful not to be heard, he reached out and pulled a nearby cover over her. She muttered something in her sleep and rolled over, bundling up among the thick fabric. It was so adorable, so utterly out of character for her, that he nearly laughed. But he knew that would wake her, and he couldn't bear to do such. Instead he unbent enough to pat her head. Her pale hand clutched at him before he could pull away, proving grabby in her sleep. Please don't go. He smiled. I'm not going anywhere, sweetheart. She didn't seem to hear. Don't leave. A strange feeling bubbled up in his ch scent. It felt like dread. Why? They were safe. They were happy. Nothing could hurt them. Stamping it down, the blonde squeezed her hand until she released his. For a moment he found himself tempted to carry her to bed, but thought better of it. Salem looked too comfortable where she was and he didn't want to risk rousing her. An almighty thunderclap rattled the world, causing Naruto to round on the sound. What in blazes? Beneath him, Salem didn't wake. Good. She needed her rest. With a final look and lingering embrace on her forehead, Naruto went to investigate. Tugging his coat off the rack once more, the whiskered warrior snatched up his staff and trudged outside. A sudden impulse told him to lock the door behind him and so he did. It seemed like a flimsy gesture, but it helped to even out his pulse. He had a bad feeling about this. High above the clouds swirled ominously, that once clear blue sky growing darker with each passing moment. The wind began to pick up, creaking through the trees. A low peal of thunder reverberated overhead, and he squinted in its direction, eyes narrowing in search of the source. Luna stirred behind him, hackles up. The very earth shook as she rose up and padded forward. A low growl rattled his ears. Calm down. He sighed. There's nothing out here. It's just thunder. A bolt of light shot toward the house. Naruto came about and raised his staff to intercept. 
pain crackled up his arm as every muscle in his body locked down, but he grit his teeth against it and swatted it into the earth, tearing a deep furrow against the soil. He kept going, carving a terrible scar into the dirt. He paid the earthen wound no mind. His attentions was already elsewhere. That's enough of that. He barked up at the clouds. Whoever you are, I can sense you up there. Get down here. A swirl of golden mist answered him and quite suddenly, he stood before a god. Guard the house, girl. Naruto strode forward to meet him. He still shot a quick thought inward. Kurama. Hem. His partner stirred. You with me. Always. Good. He gulped, gazing up at the luminescent being. Because something tells me I'm gonna need you in a second. The god of light returned to Remnant on a whim. It wasn't anger that heralded his arrival, nor guilt, but something else altogether. Curiosity, some might call it. Perhaps even boredom on his part. He sensed that the lonely girl in the tower still existed, but that she had yet to repent for her sins. His intent had been to simply peer in on her, to see why she still clung to her stubborn tenacity. Then he saw the house and all that changed. She wanted to have a life here, did she? Unacceptable. Her immortality was a curse, not a blessing. She was not meant to live out the rest of her days in peace. Her existence was meant to be bitter and brief, allowing her to reflect upon her mistakes before she returned to the cycle of life and death. In a rare fit of pique, he flung a bolt of lightning at the house, only to find it blocked. Curious. That's enough of that. Someone barked up at the clouds. Whoever you are, I can sense you up there. Get down here. A voice called to him below, and he decided to indulge his curiosity. Had his brother missed some of the mortals after all? He'd been in a right state when he laid waste to this world. Perhaps he'd not been as thorough as he believed himself to be. How wrong he was. When he drifted down to grace the mortal with his splendor, T knew at once that this one did not hail from this world. His body burned with an inner fire, one the god could not recognize. Not magic, but something else. Strange. It almost felt as if another pair of eyes were gazing back at him through those ice-blue orbs. And who are you? He asked. Someone who wants to keep her safe. Came the grunt. That about sums it up. A disbelieving noise rose in the god's throat. It might have been laughter. He wasn't sure. You. Protect her. What nonsense was this? Salem's exile was no exile at all if she had someone to share it with. What good was such a punishment? Nay, it was not a punishment at all. How could she possibly be allowed to learn from her mistakes? He'd thought to return the barest vestiges of humanity to the world once she fell in despair and repented, but this. This was simply unacceptable. Life would indeed return to this world one day, but not like this. This dot 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 this would not do. Not at all. You have been deceived, mortal. Truth was his greatest weapon, even after all these years the God of Light wielded it like a sword. She is responsible for the destruction of this world. It is by her hand that humanity perished so long ago. Do you think her a victim in this? I assure you, she is not. She is the cause of the devastation you see. And, the God of Light blinked. Pardon, what of it? The mortal shrugged. We've all got skeletons in our closet, we all make mistakes. She clearly regrets hers. So what if she's immortal? Another shrug followed the first. I'll still be there for her. She can't die, you say. A third shrug. I'll do something about that, too. Unlike you, I keep my promises. That stung a little more than it should. The god of light blinked again and tried another avenue of attack. You are an aberration. You should not be here. Of course, he expected the mortal to bow and thank him for his most generous offer. I would send you back to your world. He did not receive it. Nope. A pause. No. My home is here now, your godliness. And keep your voice down. The whiskered warrior FLC had a hand at him for silence. You're going to wake Salem. She finally fell asleep, and she's not having a nightmare for once. Do you have any idea how many years it took? Nightmares. The god of light inclined his head to regard the humble cottage behind the blonde. If the girl from the lonely tower was still suffering after all this time, then that implied she felt guilt for her actions. Perhaps he should simply return her to the cycle of life and death. With her gone, this anomaly would have no reason to dwell in this world any longer. That would be best for all parties, certainly. Uh, uh, uh. The staff slapped his CH scent, forcing him to halt mid-stride. You'll be leaving her alone. The god of light drew back with a silent scowl his face could not show. Such impudence. You would defy your god. Funny thing, that. Naruto's smile was just the wrong shade of vicious. You're not my god. Never have been, never will be. Deal with it. What is immortal to a god? Said mortal lifted his chin. What is a god to a non-believer? In a whirl of radiance, the god of light changed his shape once more. His body gained mass and form where there had been none before, golden coils of scaled light unfolding in a heartbeat. Light burst from very poor of his being as his jaws lengthened, the horns upon his head growing wicked and sharp. Within moment, he ceased to resemble a human at all and became a best unparalleled. Great golden whiskers hung from a moth filled with terrible teeth, teeth that parted now to speak. Do you believe now? He asked. No. The young man deadpanned. Oh, look. A dragon. Is that supposed to scare me? Listen to me very carefully, said Dragon reared back, coils writhing and twisting like some hideous snake. I will only say this once. Do not mistake wielding some semblance of my brother's power for our true might. Immortality or not, I am still a god. And you. A peal of almighty thunder echoed through the skies above, resonating with his words. You are a tin man in a lightning storm. Allow me to offer a rebuttal. Naruto raised his staff. I'm not a tin man. I'm a lightning rod. 
Let your storm it come. I do not wish to kill you. Such recklessness, such temerity. Truly, the arrogance of these mortals knew no bounds. Let me through. This is your final warning. The staff came down. You cannot pass, he declared. And who are you to claim such a thing, mortal? My name is Uzumaki Naruto, said mortal stood fast beneath the weight of his gaze. I am a shinobi from the Hidden Leaf Village, host of the Nine-Tailed Fox, protector of the innocent, devourer of gods. He seemed almost ashamed to admit that last part. I say again, you shall not pass. Cross that line in the sand at your own peril. A lone finger rose to accuse him. But know that if you do dot 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 if you take that faithful step forward into my domain dot 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 if you even think of hurting Salem. His staff struck the earth, splintering it in a single strike. You're gonna regret it. The god of light twitched. Enough of this. He'd given this fool countless chances to step aside, even offered to return him to his rightful place. Yet he continued to defy him and so too did his patience grow thin. He would remove this impudent pup, then return lonely girl to the cycle of life and death once more. All would be made well. This farce would never bear repeating. He and his brother would return to this world and remake it as it was meant to be dot 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 and they would never suffer such rebellion again. As you wish. His head bowed. I will end your life painlessly. A vicious crack howled through the air as a bolt of lighting lanced from heaven to earth faster than the naked eye could comprehend. There was no warning beyond that, nay, even that noise alone was more illusion than any real afterthought. It was a swift, singular strike, the wrath of a mighty deity made manifest in but a single breath. Blue eyes rose to meet it. Death came with a thunderkelp, and someone shouted back, You shall not pass. Naruto caught it. Rather than dodge or evade or even block like any sane mortal would, the blonde planted his feet, cast his staff aside, and took it head on. Bare feet bit into the dirt as he skidded back nine paces, sparks skittering across his form. A single grunt of pain was all he gave. Nothing more, nothing less. Azure orbs narrowed up, framing a wild grin within. In a single seamless movement he stomped down, swept his arms low in a sweeping stance across the lower part of his torso, pressed two fingers together and... The god of light stiffened. A pang of dread overtook him. No, surely not. Huh. Bake RNG. A sharp bark of triumphantly manic laughter burst into the air as the mortal flung the god's own lightning back in his face. Caught wholly unawares, the god of light tried to evade, but it was too late. For his folly, he took his own blast dead in the CH scent. It bore a terrible hole through his serpentine form and smote him from the skies as surely as a falling star. To his credit, the startled god tried to right himself. He tried to recover his lost momentum. Tried to do anything other than fall. He did not succeed. What he did was topple out of the sky squawking a startled crow, hitting every single branch on the way down. The trees were a cruel MSDRS. The ground, a harsh taskmaster. It showed him no mercy. And the mortal. Hold just a moment. Where had the mortal gone? He'd been standing there only a second before dot 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 wait. A kick slammed into his mighty skull, sending his world spinning. Never mind. He'd found the mortal. At first, the god of light didn't sense the coming danger at all, indeed, he couldn't even begin to comprehend the very concept of such. Danger, what could possibly hurt him beyond his own power. He would heal quickly from this, and not make such a mistake again. For all his claims to power, the mortal could not kill him. He knew this. He'd simply made a mistake. That was all. Foolishness. He growled. A miracle can only occur once. That opinion changed when said mortal flashed into existence directly before his right iris. For a fleeing moment, the god of light glimpsed a terrifying visage boring into his own. Only then did he realize his peril. Too close. Far too close. All of his instincts the very fiber of his being. Howled at him to move, yet fear, actual fear, paralyzed him. He couldn't move. If a miracle only happens once, the cheeky mortal leered at him, then why do you call it the second time? Anger broke through the fear and the mighty dragon sought to to rear back and use his jaws against this sudden threat, only for a gleaming golden hand to grasp one of his long whiskers. A swift tug yanked him back to the ground, stunning him once more. The mortal stamped down on his snout, pinning him in place before he could thrash his way to safety. A strange, keening shriek filled the air and for the life of him, the god of light couldn't place its origin. Hold on. Now he saw a light. Walked towards it. Naruto rammed the racin shuriken through his right eye and for the first time since he'd come to be, the god of light cried out in pain. The sheer force of the jetsu crunched against his skull, obliterating one of his horns and eviscerating his lower jaw as it bore him down into the ground. A thousand tiny blades tore at his scaled visage, ripping and tearing like countless hungry mouths eager for BLD. Make it stop, make it stop, make it stop. There was no thought, no rhyme, no reason, only endless torment. He couldn't move, couldn't think, couldn't breathe. Trying to push it away with his claws only made it worse, for the attack tore at them as well, dragging them into the vortex of despair with merciless intent. Quite suddenly, it was over, leaving the god of light trapped in a crater of his own making. A deity reduced to a quivering wreck upon the forest floor, wishing for death. Death would be a mercy compared to this. Writhing in pain, the fallen god could do naught but revert to his true humanoid form and try to recover, left wasted and gasping for air as his wounds struggled to heal. He was eternal, everlasting. An attack such as this would not kill him. That wasn't to say it didn't hurt however. It did, immeasurably so. Agony filled every cell of light that made up his body. 
The attack was made for the sole purpose of taking lives. There could be no other cause for such a destructive thing. Oh, uh, an angry hiss greeted him and he dared to look up to see his tormentor waving a ruined arm. That hurts. Suppose that's what I get for letting my temper get the better of me and not throwing the DMN thing. As he looked on, the man's ravaged right arm began to heal, fresh pink skin overtaking scarred tissue. Within moments the injury ceased to be in its entirety. Impossible. He rasped. How can dot 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 were you? I told you. I devour gods. Slim shoulders rose and fell in a shrug as he flexed his restored fingers. As to that little trick with the lightning, well, the mortal gave him a wink. What can I say? A few decades gives a man time to practice. I may not quite have the almighty cosmic power bit down yet, but I'm getting there. The god of light tried to rise. A booted foot stomped down again, trapping his skull where it lay. Why, uh, why? The mortal Naruto tested him, waving one finger. You're not going anywhere. Let's have a chat. Unseen eyes narrowed. We dot 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 have nothing to speak of. I think we do. Those slitted eyes narrowed to vicious slits. Lift the curse from Salem. No, I wasn't asking. A fresh race and sure I can snarl to life in the blonde's palm. Lift it. Thou, you misunderstand. I cannot. It was the truth, after all. What needed he to lie? The truth would bring this impudent mortal more pain than any falsehood. She was cursed by both my brother and I together, and only through our power together may the curse be lifted. No amount of pain can make me perform an act that is beyond me. You have a brother. Red eyes blinked in surprise. Call him, then. I'll knock some sense into him, too. The god of light knew he could. He could send out a call to his younger sibling at this very moment. Summon him here, to this world once more. It was the right bequeathed him as eldest. But that would mean giving in to this mortal. Granting him what he wanted. Doing his bidding. It would mean they were wrong to curse that woman in the first place. That wretched little witch who dared to trick them. He had thought to return her to the cycle of life and death, but now. After the beating he'd taken. He felt no such charity. No, he refused. This arrogant oaf deserved to be miserable. He would not call his brother here, because if he lost to this mortal, the god of darkness might yet be swayed. My brother is not so foolish as you might think. He will have seen our fight and will stay away. He relished the look of despair that flashed across the blonde's face before he MSDR himself. Salem must understand the importance of life and death. Only then will she be released. Release. Naruto kicked him. She already does, you twit. Can you see that? She does not. The god of light sneered. She never will. The sphere slowly guttered out in the mortal's palm. Then I'll find a way to lift the curse myself. Foolishness, again. You cannot. Funny. They told me I couldn't be a shinobi. Wild eyes locked on him, burning with cold intent. They told me I couldn't beat a goddess, either. I did both of those things. Why not break a curse and go three for three? Such arrogance. I cannot die. I am eternal. Maybe so. A blonde brow rose. But right now, you're weaker than you've ever been. Haven't you noticed? The god of light turned his attention inward. His injuries had been slow to heal, even now he hadn't fully recovered from that last attack. His might and majesty were still very much present, yet now that he knew what to look for, he noticed it. Everything felt, dimmer somehow, as though someone had cast a shadow over his very being. Surely that technique couldn't have damaged him this much. No, the word was a hiss. Yup. Naruto smacked his lips with a resounding pop. The race in Suriken is a nasty piece of work, isn't it? My jutsu was made to target the cells of whomever it hits. Guess gods have those too. How long will it take you to recover from this? Years. Decades. Centuries. A wordless snarl greeted him. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue. You are unwise dot 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 to lower your defenses. Fury consumed the god of light as he bucked the blonde's boot away and transformed in a second swirl of holy radiance. For a moment, the mortal reared back in surprise, blue eyes bulging. In that moment, draconic jaws closing around him with a terrible crunch. It was a brutal end for a brutal warrior. Content in his victory, the god of light turned to regard Salem's cottage and the lone Beowulf guarding it. Thump. He stilled. Thump. Thump. This wasn't possible. Thump. 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 That fool couldn't possibly be. The god of light felt his teeth crack a heartbeat later as a pair of giant hands forced themselves between his incisors. Something impossibly large pushed his mouth open, inch by agonizing inch, wrenching bone and sinew and twine. A low growl rose in his ears. It did not belong to him. With each passing moment it grew louder, and so too did his strength wane. No, no, no. This could not be. It mustn't be. Insipid mortal. He cried, panic overtaking him. Why won't you die? He exhaled in a mighty torrent of death, bathing the fool hiding in his mouth with napalm. It wasn't enough. His jaws continued to part. Fire burst from his maw to set the very trees alight. The pain did not abate. Still he roared. It only grew worse. Still he spat flame and fury, thrashing against the forest floor. Yet his torment did not end. Why? Because I made a promise. Something latched onto his tongue, and the fire within cut off in a gurgle as golden hands locked around the offending tissue. The god of light had mere moments to comprehend his peril, to actually consider begging for mercy. He never had the chance to give voice those words, for his foe tore it free from his maw. By then, he was too busy roaring to offer anything resembling speech. One final blow broke his jaw, and then he was free, alighting upon the ruined soil below. You know, he reached up, pulling a towering tooth free from his shoulder. 
I was trying to be nice. A baleful red eye regarded him as he cast it aside. Clearly, kindness is wasted on you. Now it was the blonde's turn to change. Naruto didn't simply gain height. Even in his agony, the god of light recognized that. Because he became something else entirely. Rather, something else rose around him to carry him with it, flinging him into the air as a body grew around him. For a moment, just a moment, the wounded deity glimpsed a mighty golden kitsune looming over him. Fresh, healthy, utterly unhurt, unlike himself. Oh, he had a moment to blink up at the behemoth he'd unleashed. I've blundered. Yes, the universe agreed wholeheartedly. And now you reap the whirlwind. His world vanished in a haze of pain. The monster with many tails knew no mercy. It gripped the god of light by the horns and smashed his ruined face down into the ground. Broken and bleeding, he fought back nevertheless, trying in vain to coil around the creature, to choke the life from it, to no avail. It tore his coils away with callous ease and pinned him, forced him to revert once more. So too did the boot stomp down on God's skull again, now with ten times the force of before. And just like that, he found himself face to face with the mortal once more. You done now. Nothing left in the tank. Nothing more to say. His adversary scoffed, grinding an armored heel into the God's visage. That's all right. I'll do the talking. Now you may be thinking, if I can devour gods, why not take some of your power, too? Surely having that would only help lift the curse, right? His armored boot ground down further, fracturing the god's face. Well, the answer might surprise you. Naruto leaned closer, pressing his forehead to that of the fallen deity. Lips brushed what passed for the being's ear. I already have. A god of light balked. Lies, surely. That was impossible. When? How? He would have felt such a thing. But he was already so diminished, weakened by the last blast dot 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 he had no way of ascertaining the truth, of knowing whether the race ensure I can had truly weakened him this much, or if something was truly stolen from him. Had it been during that brief battle. It couldn't be. Put it, Salem may not be strong enough to banish you from this world, but me. Pearly white teeth flashed at him in a ghastly grin as he leaned back. After that little dip a few decades ago, I'm stronger than I've ever been. Unfortunately for you, I'm not as nice as I sued to be. And now, a hand rose, bathed in golden light, fingers splayed. Memories or not, it doesn't take much to see you for who you are. The god recoiled, still clutching a ruined limb to his ch scent. And what am I? A parasite. I've dealt with those before, too. The mortal continued to talk almost amicably, even as that lone palm began to swirl with eerie light. Could light be black? Orichimaru. Madara. Kaguya. You may think you're special, but to me. Blue eyes bled red. You're just a big fish trapped in a small pond. Now the other hand rose to cup it, building the blaze in his hand once more. You don't even realize there's a whole ocean out there, filled with other fish. And there are sharks in deeper waters. Is that what you claim to be? Answer that question yourself. Pearly white teeth flashed in the storm. You and your brother can send your armies at us. His voice rose as the wind picked up, straining to be heard in the coming darkness. Send your proxies. Send your servants. Send your followers. 